Hey y'all, Morgan Freeman here. I know we're all hunkered down during these trying times trying to limit our uh, travel and stuff, but I always believe that during trying times, nothing beats delicious food and soulful music with family and friends. So how about joining me uh, on a virtual trip to the Mississippi Delta, home of America's blues and some of the best fried catfish you'll ever find. In fact, why don't you watch with me as our favorite blues artists enjoy some authentic cooking at Cooker Grocery and Eatery, and then treat us to some real Delta blues at Ground Zero Blues Club. So sit back and enjoy a tasty episode of Deep Fried Blues. One, two, three, four. In the morning with nothing but juking on my mind all day long, y'all. It's like on by my day. All I can think about is juking the night away. I'm a juke joint player. I like juking all the time. I'm a juke joint player. I've been juking all my life. I'm a Jew joint player. I've been juking all my life. Every night we go juking. We make the people feel nice. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a Jew joint player. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a Jew joint player. I'm a Jew joint player. I like, I like juking all the time. Day. All I can think about is juking the night away. I'm a juke joint player. I like juking all the time. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a juke joint player. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a juke joint player. I'm a juke joint player. Juking all, all the, the time. time. Hey, hey y'all! Hey. I'm a juke joint player. Hey, 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 hey! I'm a juke joint player. I'm a juke joint player. I like, I like juking all, all the, the time. time. Welcome to another episode of Deep Fried Blues at Hooker Grocer in Clarksdale. I'm here with Hal and Mad Bill Perry. Yes. And we're going to cook mashed potatoes, peas, and gravy. Yes. All right. <laughs> and here's the uh, ingredients for the uh, gravy. I'm using chicken fat, which is what we got from making roast chicken yesterday. Flour. We're going to also make some uh, mushy peas, which I've already made. So let's make some gravy. Let's put, well. Why don't you make the gravy? Okay, I'll make the gravy. Don't leave it up to me because, <laughs> see, well, what can I say? You know, I'm not a cook. <laughs> All right, well, first thing we're going to do. I can do... play a little guitar, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get that chicken fat in there. Okay, so when you make a gravy, you've got to start off with a roux. And a roux is just basically flour and butter or some kind of lard. So to make a roux, you've got to make equal portions flour to fat. So today we've got the chicken fat. Here's the flour. We're just going to pour that in. So we're just going to stir that up. It's going to become a paste. You want to get in there and just stir that slowly. A lot of people like to make their roux with a little bit of a, um, a brown base, but we're not really going to worry about that now. I think this chicken fat's got enough flavour in it as well. So, so far we've got two tablespoons of fat, two tablespoons of flour, and three cups of chicken stock. This is just powdered chicken stock. So keep, you keep stirring and I'm going to 
keep pouring. Uh -huh. The name Howlin' Mad, you don't come across as an angry man to me, so where, where, did, where did it come from? I think a better Howlin' Mad than Howlin' Insane, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any kind of reference to um, Howlin' Wolf? Uh -uh. No? Yeah, whatsoever. Was he an influence on your music? Uh, not really. My biggest influence just came from gospel. Yep. Yeah. All right, so Bill's going to keep stirring there. So now, Bill, we're just going to let that simmer and we're going to do some mashed potatoes. But it's, oh, as I said, it's not going to be out of the packet. So the first thing I'm going to do is earlier on, I boiled some potatoes. Okay. Okay, so they're nice and soft and tender. Now the secret to a good mashed potato is make sure that your potatoes are hot because once they go cool, they're going to go all lumpy. So we're going to keep that. Like something else new. This is called a muli. All it requires is just a little bit of love and the result is just nice and smooth and fluffy. Oh, okay. So, turn this. And that smashes those, or rices those potatoes. Then if we lift that up, look that at that. Fun too. It's already mashed. Wow. Isn't that cool? Wow. All right. Never seen that like yeah. this before. While they're still hot, we're going to heat up our butter and our cream. You don't want to put your cream in cold because if you put your cream in cold, the potatoes are just going to contract and go cold. So we're going to make sure all the ingredients that go into this oh, are going to be warm. Bill, now that we've riced those potatoes, this is called chinois or a fine sieve and then we're going to push this through again so it's even oh, finer yeah. so watch this i think i'm learning some yeah i mean not everyone's going to have that gadget back there but everyone's going to have a sieve in their house so if you just want to take the time and push the potatoes through that sieve with a, with a spoon it's just going to be so much smoother than just potatoes with the old school masher. Oh, okay. So you don't have to go out and buy special stuff. Oh, it's just like you don't have to go out and buy that special special guitar amp. It's, it's all in your fingers. Cream and butter. Now we're going to chuck that in there. Stir it around till we get the texture that we want. I like my mashed potatoes a little bit loose. So look at that. Look how creamy wow. that is. Now that looks good. Yeah. Potatoes are thirsty, very thirsty for the salt, so don't be scared of putting some salt into your mashed potatoes. Okay. We've got our gravy ready to go, our peas, which just English peas. I um, boil them up with some onion and some uh, smoked pork bones. So now here comes a little surprise for y'all. I know that you wanted mashed potatoes, yeah. peas and gravy, but in Australia, we have a thing called a meat pie and it's made from puff pastry. And on top of it, we put mashed potatoes, peas and gravy. So this dish was like really, really popular in the, in the 30s and 40s. This would be a thing. There would be a, a, a caravan called Harry's Cafe de Wheels and all, all of the workers would flock to this place and have their meat pie with the mushy peas, gravy, <laughs> pastry bottom. Whoa. And inside that, it's slow cooked beef and vegetables. Oh, okay. It is so tasty. So here we're, we're going to just take that. Now here comes the mashed potato. Oh, look at that. Wow. And here comes the gravy. All right. Here we go. Wow. Mushy peas, mashed potatoes, meat pie, and gravy. Yeah. Start out by doing something like this right here. I got the blue. Lord knows I got the blue. If I didn't choose 
Lord knows I got the blues See Blues have a way Following you around If you don't watch yourself up Blues will get you down That's alright It's got its own mind I dig this It's mine Car don't start I don't check to see why I don't mind walking because Price of gas is so high That's alright Oh, to walk sometimes Out there walking, it keeps the blues off your mind. Let me play it one time. Here it comes. Ladies yeah. first. Right. That looks and beautiful. Ooh. Johnny, you never cease to amaze me, I swear. <laughs> so, first of all, you've been playing the blues for 40 years. Actually, a little bit longer than that. Oh, no, no. So, so my information is wrong. He's been playing for 40 plus years. We'll say that, okay? Right. So, That's right. 
I saw that you did uh, some some projects for Lil Milton. He was actually the one who told you, start your own band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It all started in Memphis at the Lorraine Motel, right? Mm. A knock was uh, came on my door and it was Milton. Mm. Who's that in here singing? That's me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I didn't know you could sing. Well, if you want to call that singing, you know, but yeah. <laughs> so at any rate, on his show, well, he cut the band set down to uh, 30 minutes and gave me 15 minutes on his show. No, no. Yeah, so I was actually uh, his opening act there for a minute. Mm. Yeah. Oh. And uh, and you have a lot of uh, Chicago style blues in influence well, as well. Well, see, you know, my basic uh, influence, you know, came from Chicago. Yeah. Because that's where I was at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it all started out in gospel music. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, from there, after some years, moved into blues and stuff. And uh, the funny thing about that was, when I left gospel music mm -hmm. and started playing blues music, mm -hmm. well, it was like leaving Harvard or Yale and coming to kindergarten. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the difference in the, yeah. in the two worlds, okay? Well, you know, I read that your dad gave you your first guitar that he won in a dice game. Now, of all the stories I've heard, I think that's that's like the funniest, you know, well, that I've and heard. it's a true story. Yeah, yeah. You well, see, mm -hmm. see, my daddy was a moonshiner. Okay. Well, okay. So on the weekend, you know, we always had people coming through buying whiskey. Mm -hmm. And this little guy named Ned Bowles, he, you know, he knew Robert Johnson. He used to you know, talk about Robert Tell Sirs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But plan wise, I would be like <laughs> paying my, attention. Paying attention. So my daddy like, boy, I'm gonna get you a he didn't say guitar, I'm gonna get you a guitar. Okay, I'm gonna get you a guitar. Okay. And one night he came in and sure enough he had that guitar. <laughs> that, that, that he had won in the crap game. And how old how old were you then, Mr. Perry? Do you remember how old were you then? Probably about Maybe 10. Oh, man. Yeah, it goes way back. Yeah. Way back. Of course, I always like to uh, talk about everybody's accomplishments. Mm -hmm. I know you've been in a couple movies, one of them with Cuba Gooden Jr. Mm -hmm. I know that I believe in 2014, you actually won um, a, a, the international blues competition as a duo. And then, plus, you know, I got my own documentary out there. I know. Yeah. I know. And, uh, I know. You know, the blues has changed so much. Uh, you got the the newer guys coming out, uh, Kingfish and... Well, you know I'm the one that gave him the nickname Kingfish, right? Didn't know that. I always wondered, <laughs> I always wondered how Kingfish got his name. Well, see, you know, I used to work teaching the Delta Blues Museum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I would always try to come up with what I would call a blues name for him, okay? And I would also be joking with him like, you know, bring me some liquor yeah. to drink. You know, I got to, you know, I'm a blues man, I got to have liquor to drink. No, no, right. So one day I told Kingfish, I said, well look, I say, uh, well he wasn't Kingfish then, he was Chris mm -hmm. I say, uh, bring me a bottle of wine tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mr. Perry, you know I can't buy no wine? I said, well get your mama to buy it. You know, <laughs> just bring me the wine tomorrow, yeah. okay? <laughs> so at any rate, the next day he came in, when he walked in the uh, room at the museum, Dropped his shoulder down, all sad looking. Walked over to Miss Perry. See, I had your wine, but I dropped it and broke it. Oh. I said, "What? I, I dropped it and broke it." I said, "No, no, man. I, you know, I don't, I don't believe that. Get one of these number close to him." I said, "You drink that." <laughs> <laughs> no, Miss Perry. I, I said, you remind me of a character from an old TV show, Amos and Andy. I mm. said, from this forward, this day forth, you will be known as a kingfish because mm. kingfish was always shucking and jiving yeah. people. Okay? Yeah, he, did. he was. Yeah. In fact, Shy and I watched a uh, episode of Amos and Andy last night. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all know that's how Kingfish got his name. Anybody who want to know Mr. Perry was responsible for that name that you probably heard a million times. Oh man, what is one thing that you teach your students that's important to you that you think is important for a performing blues artist? Be yourself. Be yourself. 
Ain't nothing wrong with it. That's ain't nothing wrong with it. Because yeah, there's only one Bill Perry. It's <laughs> right. on, only one Howl of Mad. I ain't seen another Howl of Mad now. I haven't. I haven't. And you won't. I, I better not. I better not. I better not. I better not. Well, y'all, we're going to finish up this meal, and then we're going to head on over to Ground Zero Blues Club to listen to some good old-fashioned juke joint blues yeah. by Mr. Howlin' Mad Perry. Himself. Himself. The original. Yeah. The one and only. <laughs> the one and only. <laughs> <laughs> not just howling Mad, but howling Mad. That's right. That's right. And, and can't nobody else do that but him. <laughs> you go ahead and count it off. Let me quit. Well, you ain't 
so big You just tall, that's all You know I want to say that one more time Big boss man Can't you hear me when I call Big boss man Can't you hear me when I call Well you ain't so big You just tall That's all Dig this I'm gonna get me a boss man See one that'll treat me right I work hard in the daytime, I wanna rest these at night, big boss man. Can't you hear me when I call? Well, you ain't so big, you just tall, that's all. this one because this is about the way my pocket says got up this morning I had rumbling on my mind up this morning, y'all. I had run on my mind. I went and looked in my pocket. All I had was five dollars and a dime. So I got to leave you walking I ain't got no other way to go Got to leave you walking, y'all I ain't got no other way to go With five dollars and a dime in my pocket Can't believe I won't go very far Oh no I won't Let me play it one time
and I dig it. My bags are packed. I got my guitar in my hand, see it? My bags are packed, y'all. I got my guitar in my hand. When I walked out that door this morning, I'm going to show the world I'm a real blues man. And it proves it by being right here at Ground Zero, the number one blues club in Clarksdale and the we world. We love Ground Zero. Thank yes. you so much to Mill. Yes. Thank Mr. You. Bill Luckett. Yes. And thank you. And thank you. Did we look did thank I, you, do Alan. I did I look pretty good on camera? You know You look purdy. And I look purdy. We'll see a quick story, and this is a true story, right? <laughs> ABC came out one time to do some filming over in Oxford some years back, right? And they got all their cameras set up, you know, to start filming and stuff. So, uh, you know, came on stage to get ready to play. And as soon as I started playing, they turned the cameras on, they cut off. They wouldn't work no more. So I killed their cameras. <laughs> so your cameras is lucky today, all right? <laughs> well, thanks again. And uh, here we go. <laughs> 